Good morning. This is Pastor Dave Schweppe, and I'm offering the Daily Bible Study for Friday, March 20th, 2020. The passage for today is Psalm 23, also known as the Shepherd Psalm. 80 days into 2020. Times are changing, aren't they? Who would have thought back 81 days ago, December 31st, that by this time, governments around the world would be encouraging their citizens to social distance, wash your hands often, and stay home. 81 days ago, we were still in the midst of the greatest economy ever. And now, all you have to do is go to the grocery store and you'll find people are wondering, are we entering into a recession? Are we entering into something worse. In the midst of this chaos, we are offered Psalm 23 for this weekend's psalm. When I read it this morning, the truth is, even though it's only six verses long and it was written some 3,000 years ago, I found it really can speak to our situation. Hey, by the way, a side note on how to read scripture. I was taught by, a, by one of my bishops to have the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. I know the notion of a newspaper dates me just a bit. But what is meant by the saying is to read the scripture piece, read that passage, even dig into its setting and the reason for the writer to write it. But then also think about how it connects with what's going on in your life and the world around you. Look at the headlines of the day, read articles, go on the web and listen to the news, listen to commentaries, and then take a moment, reflect on how that scripture and that news interact, interconnect, and you'll be surprised. You may come out of the experience with a really good idea or something really profound, a profound understanding of the world around you maybe even how God might be working behind the scenes. So let's get back to the psalm, shall we? How does it connect? Well, first, the shepherd psalm. The concept of shepherd is, let's be honest, pretty foreign to most of us. So I suggest you go online, look up what a shepherd does. For a brief summary, a shepherd's primary responsibility is for the welfare and safety of the flock. The shepherd leads the flock from one place of food, one place, one source of food to the next, and does so looking for the dangers surrounding them, from animals that could attack the flock, to precarious terrain, to poisonous plants growing right next to the nutritious grasses that the sheep feed upon. Now, given that, Let's now read the first part of the psalm. Again, given what we know now about shepherds and what's taking place today. Here it is. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. The Lord leads me beside still waters. The Lord restores my soul. The Lord guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now again, I'm gonna read it. And I want you to go ahead and think about where you're at, where our country is at, and where the world's at, and how this scripture can interconnect with what's taking place. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he, he leads me beside still waters, and he restores my soul. The Lord guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. All right, so what are the connections that you made? We're certainly not in green pastures today, are we? The waters of the news and of our lives are anything but still. They've been churned quite a bit, stirred up by an invisible entity of contagion that seems to, at this point, randomly pick out one county and then the next, one person and then the next, without rhyme, 
without reason. Now, the truth is humanity will overcome COVID-19. Humanity will either find a vaccine, find a cure, or, let's be honest, through the old-time method of natural selection, be thinned out, and gain immunity the hard way. But the psalmist reminds us that God will guide humanity because humanity is God's children. And God will lead humanity through to better pastures. God will lead us through for God's name's sake. All right, let's move on to the next couple pet lines of, this, of the psalm. Again, listen to the words. Also think about what's going on around you in your personal life and in the news that you've been hearing. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. So what connections have you made? Notice the valley is not death itself. The valley is the shadow of death. Back in high school, I went on a three-week bicycle trip throughout Wisconsin and up to Duluth, Minnesota. One day, a storm came quickly in from the west, and the 20 or so of us had to brace ourselves in ditches beside the road for protection. One of the group became very, very scared and began shouting, We're all going to die. We're never going to make it. The pastor, I'd like to say, but it really didn't happen this way, who was leading the bike ride, stood up and went over to the person and held them while the thunder and lightning and wind surrounded us and then eventually left us. That's really not how it took place. It'd be nice to say that. No. The truth is what ended up happening was that we couldn't find the individual and we finally got to uh, the next local bar uh there's a bar about every 10 miles at least back in the 70s there was a bar every 10 miles in wisconsin or so it seemed and there was the youth he was there he was uh being cared for by the bartender and he was saying how we're all gonna die we're never gonna make it but notice what happened he was walking through riding through the valley of the shadow of death but fear no evil for god is with us that bartender was God's hands and feet, heart, mind, brought the kid in, took care of him until the rest of the group could make it to him. Pretty amazing. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me, your rod, your staff. They will comfort me. Well, let's move on. Again, listen to the words. Think about what's going on in your personal life Think about what's going on in the world around you. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. You know, the other night I heard something about a study coming out of France that may help with this COVID situation. Something about the use of an effective malaria medicine that can help us fight the spread of COVID-19. And yesterday, during a press conference, the president discussed how trials of treatments were already underway, not just with this particular medicine, but with all sorts of ideas. We're going to make it. Long ago, I heard about how many of our modern medications had their source in nature. Penicillin, for one, was discovered by accident. The smallpox vaccine was developed from cowpox. And the list goes on. You see, God, our creator, has already placed a treatment within his creation. And God has already placed the individuals able to discover that treatment among us. Utilizing their gifts, their talents, their abilities. Even if they do not believe in God, God will provide the answer, the solution, the vaccine for us. One more verse. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the hope, isn't it? This is our hope. 
that through the storms of life, God is not only walking with us, but working his goodness and mercy, even when we do not see it. God is here and God will shepherd us through the storm. For further understanding about the Lord as shepherd, I encourage you to read uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 21. There, Jesus goes ahead and talks about being the good shepherd. And next time, we get to hear the story of a blind man's encounter with Jesus. It comes from John, chapter 9. Be sure to read that before our next encounter. In the meantime, take care. God bless. Keep safe. Talk with you soon. Bye-bye.